Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And Geeky is very magical. She is. You need mm, to know this. Not tonight. Uh, <laughs> we're going to talk about, and I, I guess we can talk about it, right? This is this is the title of the movie, The American Society of Magical Negroes. This I is, remember when I heard this, I was like, wait, what? I, I at first thought it was going to be like a Harry Potter parody. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I thought, too. It's not. Uh, so we're going to talk about this as objectively as we can. It bombed at the box office. I mean, we're talking dire, dire box office, barely a, a million dollars. Um, well, when I saw the trailer, it seemed to insult everyone. Pretty much. That's the takeaway I've heard, is that pretty much everybody's insulted. Now, uh, this is supposed to be a riff on the the magical Negro trope, which apparently is a thing. We'll, we'll talk about this. Um, a little bit, and then we're going to talk about the box office, and uh, yeah, a lot of people made up their minds. They're like, yeah, no interest, no interest in seeing this movie. Before you get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants. You'll get a woohoo if you do. Woohoo! Uh, not not many woohoos. I'm sure at the, the studio behind this, I think it was Focus Films. Now, they do more indie stuff, but still, this had you know Justice Smith in it, and uh, it was pretty well promoted. I remember seeing uh, the trailer. I mean, well, okay, by promoted, well promoted, mocked. Honestly. I think mocked is is probably yeah. more appropriate. But uh, I got, only saw the trailer for it one time, and it was a while ago. <laughs> I was like, "What the hell is this?" I forgot it was even happening. People were talking about it. I'm like, "Oh yeah, oh, I forgot about that one." Uh, so I have to give a hat tip to Lorena Creole, who uh, I guess you said she suffered through the movie. Uh, yeah, I think she said Madam Web was better. Madam Web was better. I, I mean, don't quote me on that, but I think that's what oh she said. Oh my God! Uh, yeah, so it's got a what thirty-one percent on the tomato meter. Now, sixty-six percent of the five people that went to go see it. Actually, wait, no, wait. Click on the the um, not that the verified ratings. Oh, okay. So if we go to the all audience score, verified sixty-six percent, all audience twenty-six percent. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a difference. Man, they even have ads. Look at this. They have ads on, on this section here now, too. Like, when did this happen? They must be getting pretty desperate. Yeah, um, that's not very good, guys. But, yeah, people are are not real happy uh, with this movie. Now, I guess before we get into it, I had to do a little digging as to what the magical Negro trope is, being an unmagical white man. But Mr. T. Mr. T. Yeah, hey, Mr. T. I love Mr. T. Mr. T as the wise janitor. So th the trope is a minority character will step forward to help the protagonist with their pure heart and folksy wisdom and possibly magic. Think Uncle Remus, I guess, from Song of the South. Are we allowed to say that? I don't know. They're usually black but may come from another oppressed minority. They step into the life of the much more privileged and almost always white central character and in some way enrich the central character's life. The Magical Negro, also known as Magic Negro or Mystical Negro, is from a society of noble savages. Okay, what? so this is a whole, this is, we're going down a rabbit hole. So basically, basically what they're saying is that the black character is in the movie just to help the white character be a better character or get what they want. And I guess that is the plot that there's like a whole organization. It's supposed to make the white people feel better. It's supposed to make the white people like feel that. better. It now, stupid. I was like, this insults everyone. Now, if you if you uh, played it for laughs, um, you know, I, I, it might have actually been kind of funny, but apparently people don't think it's it's that great. They don't think it's that great, including black women. And Carla black here. Guy. Yeah, the black guy. There's some a lot of white people didn't like the movie about the magical Negroes. Can you imagine that? Uh, she did not like it. So many disparate ideas and tones are being mashed up here and none of them gel. Uh, Josh Parm here. Uh, what should be a daring exercise ends up being a lethargic analysis that doesn't have as much bite as it thinks it does. It's a noble effort that lands with underwhelming results. The point of this was to edutain white folks, probably. But here's the thing, you have to get them to show up to the movies. <laughs> They're not going to go. I mean, they used, when I was a kid, they used to do this kind of, like, they would do these lessons in movies and stuff, but they, they made it, like, you know, less obvious, and they put, like, you know, good comedians and things in it to get people to come to the movie. To get the to get the message, and they would they would the play it for laughs. And this is this is this was just too 
on the nose. Yes. Yes. Little, little on the nose. We're going to yell because white people didn't go see it. I, I, Shocker. Per, yeah. Well, apparently this thing made less money than bros. Somebody said in the comments, made less money than bros. Uh, it made less money than um, Gem and the Holograms. Wow. Which only made $1.32 million in 2015. No, I have that, never watched that movie, and nor will I ever watch that movie. I am protesting it forever. It's uh, Gem in, in name only. Mm -hmm. Like So much potential wasted. Now now that the 80s are cool, now that Stranger Things has has made the 80s cool again, they could do it right. Because you've got, two, you've got the 80s, and you've got the nostalgia, and you've also got uh, AI. So you yeah. could, you could, you know, and you've got social media. So yeah, you actually could make it, you could make it happen now. But they didn't. They did Anyway. Anyway, they made it cheap. Uh, yeah, it was Al Capone here said bros made more money opening oh, weekend. Oh, wow. That's bad. Um, that is, that is pretty bad. So let's go out to the article here on Variety. Oh, hey, yeah, there's Lorena Creel's comment. This movie was ass. <laughs> there you have it. Uh, this movie was ass. Yeah. Kung Fu Panda 4 triumphs again. Uh... Of course it did. And then they get down to very, very, the very, in the very bowels of the article, the very bowels of the article. Here we go. Where shit comes from. Oh God. Well, she said it was ass. <laughs> Another newcomer focus features satirical comedy. The American society of magical Negroes. Stumble. I can't imagine like, Hey kids, do you want to go see Kung, Kung Fu Panda 4 or do you want to go see the American Society of Magical Negroes? I just, I get <laughs> it. It's like, what? The film scraped together just 1.25 million from over 1,100 venues, a smaller screen count than average. That doesn't matter. That is a pathetic, pathetic box office. Reviews and word of mouth may not help it. It only has a 30% on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, first time filmmaker, Kobe, uh, Levy directed the movie starring Justice Smith, who I like and David Allen Greer, who I also like. That's David Allen Greer. Yeah. That's David Allen Greer. He got a little thick. He got a little older. It's called aging. I, I know, but it I, happened. I didn't rec I didn't recognize him. Okay, so first. even if it wasn't double the amount of theaters, that's still like only like uh, less two than two and a half million, million dollars. Or yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah. Um, yeah, it's about a young man who was recruited, to an organization that exists to make life easier for white people. And again, that could have been a funny idea. Um, but I, I'm, I'm guessing that they they sucked all the fun out of that. Can you imagine a movie called The Society of Magical Negroes not being funny? I just think, I mean, I'm just like, what were they thinking on this one? I oh, mean, it's the American, the American society. And I was like, you could, there, there could have been so many ways they played this that it would have worked. And this was apparently the way to tick off everyone. I, I feel kind of bad. Like, I, I legitimately do like Justice Smith. I think he's a pretty good actor. I think he seems like a good guy. But um, he got robbed on D&D. D&D got, well, basically D&D, they dragged that into a political conversation, mm -hmm. which destroyed the box office. And then Hasbro didn't help with the OGL thing. That no. happened a couple weeks ago. It before. actually wasn't a bad movie. It wasn't a bad movie. I actually liked that it quite one a bit. again. And I thought he was pretty good at it. Uh, Pokemon, he was in. Yes, I like Pokemon. He was he was pretty good in Pokemon. Pokemon Go. No, it was Detective Pikachu. Is he doing? Are they doing the sequel, Detective Pikachu, called Pokemon Go? I don't know. Does he just walk around for two hours and try not to stumble? Get hit into by things? a car. Try not to get hit by a car. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so this is kind of a downgrade for him. But I feel bad because yeah, he's been in two two box office bombs in a row. Um, but uh, you know, I don't know. Somebody handed me a script called The Magical Society. Or the, American sorry, the American Society of Magical Negroes. I would have, I probably would be like, yeah, hey, is that smart? Is that is that a smart title for this movie? Like, even if it's a trope, most people don't know about the trope. That's true. A lot of people don't know about the trope. Or they they do, but they it's not enough to intrigue them to go see the movie. Yeah. And people are going to be like, oh, my God. And I can just imagine a lot of people who aren't familiar with the trope are going to be like, isn't that the kind of a racist title for a movie? Like it, the whole thing sounds like a racist train wreck. But that's just me. I didn't see it. They should have just called it Black Girl it's not Magic. For me, yeah, it's not for I know, right? you. And no, it wasn't. Apparently, it wasn't for anybody. So I'm waiting for that to be the next thing. It's gonna be like Bros. It's gonna be like, why didn't white people show up to this movie? It's lecturing white people, we don't understand. 
Just like bros, like why didn't all the straight people show up to the gay rom com? Oh, like, like, what's they, wrong with you? And they had the second Black Panther movie, and they were basically like, "Well, you need to buy tickets and let all the black people go see it, and the white people need to stay out of the theater opening weekend because the right thing to do." They did, and then, and then they did. <laughs> all the white people <laughs> well, not stay all, out. But of a lot of people didn't go, and then they're like, "That was a bad opening. We don't understand." It's like, why were the white people? It's like, no, you come on, you know. I love the first Black Panther. I didn't want to see a Black Panther movie without the Black Panther, though. Like. You know I what mean, I'm saying? I mean, that was not, to be fair, Marvel's fault. But, I know. know it wasn't Marvel's fault, but, like, I go see a Black Panther movie. I want T'Challa. I want the Black Panther. I know, but there's nothing I, I can want, do about that. I don't want no Sadly. more. You know, or whatever the hell they're calling him now. No more, Namor, Namor. Uh, no, Namor is his actual name. They call him Namor, which is so stupid. Um, but, yeah, uh, this this movie, I don't think it's going to get a sequel. You think it's going to Probably <laughs> Namor. It's probably Namor. So, now I have the British Society of Magical Negroes or the French Society of Magical Negroes. Uh, it's just not going to happen. We're going to wrap it up? Yeah. There we go, guys. I mean, go see if you want to. I guess. But pretty much everybody who's seen it that I've seen has been like, yeah, no. This movie is ass. That should be a, that should be a quote on the... <laughs> no, right? That should be a quote, a pool quote. Lorena Creole, this movie is ass. This movie is ass. <laughs> All right, we'll talk to you later. Bye.